How are you, Bill? I'm fine, thanks, Rich. Nice to be with you. Always great to be with you. When the NFL Network first knocked, was it your door they knocked on to say we want to tell us? Who was it? <laughs> well, you were in part of that, though, Bill. I mean, I was. I was, yes. Uh, the uh, I was part of the competition committee, and, and so we were, yeah, we were involved. So when you first heard that the network wanted to put cameras in there, what would you think? Uh, actually, I thought it was inevitable, and, uh, and I figured that um, it was time to, uh, to probably do it, and it was our job to try and make sure that we could, uh, we could have a, a combine that, that continued to do what it did for the clubs and at the same time creating a reasonably good television show. Sure. Where, how, how much resistance was there, though? From, uh, there from... was a, a good deal of resistance. I think uh, you know most people, most people uh, on the football side sort of recoiled a little bit. But um, you know, if you had studied it over time, as as we did on the competition committee, you know, you kind of recognized that it was going to be inevitable. So uh, you might as well make the best of it. Bill Polian joining me here, six-time NFL executive of the year, Pro Football Hall of Famer. Joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you think it needs to be modernized still even more right now, Bill? The combine? Yeah, I think there. I think there are some things that you can um, that you can look at. Like what? Uh, well, the drills. I think. Uh, I think we really need to revisit the drills with the position coaches and the coordinators, and and, and see what uh, what drills are appropriate. I think we even need to revisit uh, the issue of whether or not. Guys are competing, or we're testing. I think we we probably need to um, make that the overarching principle, and then go from there. Um, and then that would, if, if we agree that it's testing, and I think um, we probably should take a look at whether the drills we're using are um, up to speed and 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 reflect the modern game. I think that's really appropriate. Yeah, and um, I spoke about this with Mayock yesterday or Monday, Bill, and the idea may be of, of not letting the, uh, the athletes know which drills they'll be going through, that they just sort of spring it on them and that there's some sort of spontaneity involved that you can now test their ability to adjust in a, in a pressure, fat, packed moment. Would you think that that is... Something that's feasible? I, I'd not heard that before. Uh, off the top of my head, I would say no, because I'm not a believer that the fact that they prep for it now so extensively um, is a detriment. Um, you know, they, they all know what the drills will, will be, and the time drills are the ones they prep for, too. You know, they, they don't really put a lot of time in prepping for the position-specific drills. Um, the time drills are what they prep for, and that's okay because the times are all relative. You know, they, they, it's the same drill. It's just that the times go down, but they're relative to each class uh, coming through. So I, I can look at the times from 1970s, say, and, and, and equate them today, mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that the guys prep for them doesn't, doesn't really make any difference. I mean, you study for exams. Uh, why, wouldn't, why shouldn't you be able to study for this, so to speak? And, so, and and knowing knowing the scouting and and uh, and general manager and coaching community as well as you do, Bill Polian, how much of a starter or non-starter would it be to run the forty-yard dashes in prime time? Just flip it and put the forties right there in prime time for a maximum television audience. How would that go? Over? I think the, I think the real question is what are you going to do with the rest of the day? Um, I, I think, it, you know, again, there are overarching questions here that, that need to be answered. The first is um, we, we treat our athletes on our teams. We make sure that they, they, we harp on getting eight hours of sleep a night. We harp on rest. We harp on recovery. Um, we, we, bring our, we hope to bring our teams to game day as rested and as recovered and as physically able to go as we possibly can. And um, and here in the combine we do just the opposite, mm. and, and and then we then we we sort of excuse it with a talking point of saying, well, you know, the NFL is stressful. We should stress them. I don't buy that. We don't stress them in the NFL. Why should we 
it's stressful enough. We tried to get them to the game as rested and recovered as we possibly can. So why would we not do that at the combine? So start there. And, and I don't necessarily care where the 40 yard dash is placed. Um, the, 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 the circadian rhythms and the science tells me the later in the day that you run it, the better. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I don't care where it's placed. I want to make sure that we take care of the players when we get them here. And what are they doing in the other periods of time so that when we get them out on the field and they have to perform, they're able to perform at their best. Bill Polian joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, let's get to the catch committee because I saw your comments in the Washington Post and they, 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 they fascinated me to say the least, Bill, because I heard that from Jeff Fisher when he was on the show last year as well, talking about the player safety issue that if you, if you try and just say – two hands on the ball, two feet on the ground is a catch, or even if you add an extra step for the football act, that that might invite more blow-up hits and thus create an issue with player safety. Uh, why, why can't we just remove helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits on the field entirely so we remove that from an equation for the well, catch rule bill? Well, because there are some helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits that occur on the field, notably running backs and, and DBs in the secondary that, that you literally cannot remove in a, in a contact sport. You would make it touch football if, if you did. Uh, and and you, you, you probably unintendedly open up other injury issues, although the concussions are the one that we, we focus most on. So in this particular case, keep in mind that in, in catch no catch, we probably have 20 plays during the year that are controversial out of about – 5,000 if we use a, a broad general number. Um, that's not enough, in my view, um, to risk uh, changing the player safety rules. And let me walk you through it. Um, the same standard is used for catch-no-catch as is used for defenseless player. So um, in, in catch, we have a situation where a player has to have complete control of the ball, two feet down, and then control it for a period of time long enough for him to protect himself, to become a runner, to, to perform an act common to the game, whatever phrase you want to use for that. <clears throat> so those three elements exist in catch. The same three elements exist in terms of defenseless player because a defenseless player is not defenseless by, by uh, definition right. if he can protect himself and perform an act common to the game. So once we remove that third element, which is, which is what the, the critics of the rules, if you will, are arguing for, third foot down, right. uh, remove it entirely, et cetera, um, you then remove the protection for a defenseless player. Why would you want to do that for a few plays, a relatively few plays over the course of the season that – because they're on national television, become controversial. So and the, by the way, the yes. coaches on the catch no catch committee, at the outset, at the outset said, "We all know the rule. There's no issue here." To say we don't know what a catch is, that's not true for people in the National Football League. Administrators, coaches, players, they all know the rule. Um, the, the, the controversy is that people who are watching the game in super slow motion and who don't understand the rule say, well, uh, we should just have two feet down and, 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 and possession, that's a catch. Well, that's never been a catch. That's well, a bang-bang play, and, and, and we don't call those complete under any circumstances. So, but what about this then, Bill? <clears throat> uh, what about let's remove the Calvin Johnson issue or the what we just saw while you were having a conversation, while, while you were talking there? Um, we showed a B-roll for our radio audience and for your uh, edification, uh, a Michael Crabtree catch where he caught it, absolutely had possession of it, was shoved out of bounds, stumbled, took two steps, used the ball to try and break his fall, and it came loose in his hand. Can't we just at least come up with a rule where you're, if you take two steps going out of bounds when you're already out of bounds, clearly that's some, that's, that is a catch? That, can't we come up um, with something? The, comp the competition committee may look at that. That's a, that's a very narrow circumstance that the competition committee may look at. Okay. Um, because... You know, did he have possession when he went out of bounds? Must he complete the play if he shoved? I mean, those are those are uh, are very narrow points that the committee could look at, and in their wisdom, if they decide to 
you know, create a point of emphasis for officials on that, it's fine. But going to the ground, I mean, as a general principle, you've got to show the official the ball. You have to maintain control. Um, so, uh, you know, within that, within that broad parameter, if you if you got a, a little narrow issue that you could deal with without creating unintended consequences, um, then you know they probably I would say they probably would look at that. Okay. But well, in the field, in the field. By the way, uh, most of the controversy does not occur in the field. It feels That's out of bounds or in the end zone sometimes, right? I mean, well, the end zone the end zone is the same as the field. Right. The end zone exactly the same as the field. So the the the, the most controversial plays. I'm watching you run the 40-yard dash now, by the way. Thank you, Bill. Television. And That's you are impressed. Curious. It's very distracting because of how impressive it is, correct? Bill? I know it is. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but the, 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 uh, oh, uh, the idea that um, the, the most of the controversial plays uh, occur with, with uh, you know, going to the ground. At, that's, but there are very, very, very few of those. Hey, Bill, I know you don't do this a lot. I really appreciate you calling in. It's always been fun mixing it up with you, even from way back in the days when we would just be talking on NFL Total Access and you were with the, you were with the Colts way back in the day, Bill. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. My pleasure. Take care. We'll see you in Indianapolis. It's Bill Polian from the Worldwide Leader in Sports. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>